In this video, we're going to talk about some of the items that CIG has been working on this past month, ranging from AI, art, engine, VFX, locations, UI, which will ultimately result in a better gaming experience for us in Star Citizen. And we're going straight into it. The AI tech team completed several features in February. They added NPC Transit, which allowed NPCs to manage elevators and trains, and NPC Trolley Usage, which allows NPCs to move trolleys with them. They also finished the base skeleton for voids, which will enable groups of small creatures like birds, fish, and rats. Additionally, they worked on a cost area shapes for the navigation system to influence the topology of navigation mesh triangles as well as navigation agent type override parameters and expose new parameters to specific entity properties during the navigation generation phase these features require the team to write new and update existing behaviors to fix bugs related to path following while pushing a trolley the ai tools team made progress on the apollo tool adding new functionality such as master graph editing and the ability to create new multi-graph nodes support for comments inside of xml's and the ability to read object container information directly from the p4k files they also fixed several issues related to the resizing of the node graph view the team continued work on the usable coordinator tool adding support for multiple input types and fixing an issue with object containers they also investigated and fixed issues with alpha 3.18 including an issue where npcs were standing on chairs causing by incorrect animation setup that is good that they're actually figuring that out um, i think recently we noticed that uh, it's reduced significantly uh, when it comes to ai standing on chairs so that's good the ui vehicle art team was in the final art phase for the argo srv with LOD and damage passes ongoing. Work also continued on an unannounced ship and a new variant which moves into LOD zero phase after passing its gray box review. The Crusader Spirit was also in the gray box pass phase and tweaks were being made to the Miss Freelancer's interior to accommodate physicalized components. Additionally, the team was progressing on an upcoming vehicle and testing how far they could take secondary motion on the Apoa Santoye. The physics team made several improvements to box pruning to enhance performance and reduce inefficiencies. They also added support for various distance field operations and tapered capsules on articulated entities. The renderer team added motion vector support for render to support texture pipelines and improve ultra wide screen support and optimize scattered queries on the CPU side. The core engine received substantial improvement and optimization for remote shader compiler server, started work on streaming system improvements and wrapping up on support for P4K V2 for internal development tools. Additionally, they started looking into advanced tool support for memory tracking of both the server and client. Finally, the team spent time supporting Alpha 3.18. That is great. The graphics team work on finalizing Gen 12 and added support for the Vulkan graphics API. They converted the damage map system to Gen 12 and added support for profile groups and made render pipeline configurable to balance quality and cost. The team also added support for HDR and is currently working on adding TSAA to support viewports to improve visual quality. For features, the team developed new shaders and made improvements to UI shaders. They also made texture processing faster through parallelizing, filtering, and compression and started work on a new mesh format to improve loading times and rendering performance. This is good. The VFX programming team worked on fire and quantum travel effects and made usability improvements to their tools. The Planet Tech team improved the harvestable system and added instancing support to terrain chunks and working on shaping asteroid fields. Finally, the Planix and Graphics team worked together on a water system that will allow for GPU wave and ripple simulation and network sync impacts. The Locations team completed the exterior of the Seraphine Station and three Stanton Jump Points. Also, they added progress to Ruin Station and underground facilities while finishing up work on Pyro's small to medium outposts. 
for organics they prepared some cave initiatives and began looking into additional bio work the design team worked on a new mission for pyro's outpost and investigated how to achieve the gold standard outpost which resulted in a request for new features to facilitate gameplay loops related to the resource network and reputation system the UI art and design team worked on creating several future features such as interactive 3d ui prototype a universal marker for star map and a new concept for updating vehicle ui styles the ui tech team continued their work on creating a color picker ui for using an interactive screens and helped to polish the new star map and added space dust for better movement perception improving controls and creating cubic hollow volumes they also made workflow fixes such as improving comments in building block files, making it easier to inspect drawn UI, in addition to making final fixes for Alpha 3.18. The VFX team focused on converting the CPU to GPU particle library, refining new quantum travel effects also. They also began working on several new vehicles, including one with a unique thruster. Additionally, the team improved Lorville's skyline effects by adding more smoke and ambience to enhance the industrial theme. The CPU-GPU particle library conversion has also helped new teams to get better understanding of the VFX editor. You already know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. Let me know in your thoughts what excites you most about what we just spoke about. I'll see you on the next one.